conventionals that you see on the tables here are the artifacts that have come in so far. These are done by the sixth grade social studies students. Gloria spends a significant amount of time displaying all of our students' work. You know, she takes a lot of pride in the quality of work that our students complete and makes sure that everyone else can see that quality of work. I like our school to present itself well. I like the people to come in and see, oh my gosh, this is what they're doing at Memorial Junior School. This is wonderful. Every project I do is displayed somewhere, whether it be in our classroom, in our hallways, uh, in the Rockaway Mall for the Pride exhibit. She brings the school to life. These are eighth grade students' renditions of powder horns. These are made by Ms. Torres' Spanish students. They are calendars done in Spanish. I didn't have anything to put in between that would fit, so I'm, I'm the snowflake maker. So I cut snowflakes. Gloria Benson is everywhere. There's not a place you can go where you don't walk in the building and see something that she has taken part in putting together all of the displays of the student works. They all have a piece of Gloria Benson in it. Gloria Benson has been sharing her passion for art with students since she was a student. I was artistic from a, a very young age. My father was pretty artistic. The kindergarten teachers always remembered my talent in art. And um, they would ask the teachers as I went through fourth, fifth, sixth, up through eighth, would they spare me every once in a while to come down to the kindergarten class? and do artwork and art projects for the um, kindergartners. Gloria would go on to graduate from Newark Arts High School, which was the first public high school in the United States that specialized in visual and performing arts. In 1951, Newark Public Schools hired her to work in the Department of Art Education, where she would spend 14 years before leaving to devote time to raising her daughters. In the early 1970s, she returned to education, this time with Hanover Township, where she's worked in a number of schools and a variety of roles. I was all over the place. I was a secretary, I was a special ed aide, I was doing art with them, <laughs> doing music. We call Gloria the glue that kind of holds the whole school together. I don't think she'd be doing it if she didn't love it, but you can tell that she loves it by everything that she does. Today, Gloria is a full-time in-class support at Memorial Junior School, where teachers and students benefit from her five decades of experience. We study the world in my classroom, and she always has something to bring in uh, that either whether it be something she, a piece of jewelry, a piece of uh, clothing, and a story behind it that really just kind of, you know, would always personalize the experience uh, in my classroom. She's a wealth of information. She thought that the kids might need a little more help with the multiplication. She said, Mrs. Vetter, I have uh, this supplemental material. I could bring it in. I know exactly where it is. And when I looked at it, it was like exactly what I needed. She knows my curriculum. The thing that I, I find most interesting is no matter how many years she's been with me, whenever I assign a new assignment, she does it just like she's a student in my class. There's always a new course of study in math, or there's always a new course of study in science, or there's always a new course of study, uh, so things change. And I don't feel we should ask students to do something I can't do and show them. She's a true lifelong learner. I can always expect that at some point, multiple times throughout the year, I'm going to get documentation from Gloria about this workshop that she went to, and this really cool idea that she learned about. and. Here's something that I want you to share with everybody else. This was my design. Did the templates and had the students uh, cut out in different colors, the flowers and things. And you see it says, respect and caring bloom here. She's helped me be more positive and think not negative, but positive thoughts. She's funny, she's helpful, she's kind, she's caring, and she's lovable. She helps any student in any way that they need help, whether it's in the hallway, whether it's in the classroom, and they really look up to her. They really listen to her. She has great little um, ways of remembering things. Like six and eight went on a date and came back with 48. That's how I remember that. When I was stuck on a problem with rounding, she gave me a hint, five and above, give it a shove. When they raise their hands in class, Sometimes looking for me, sometimes looking for her, sometimes, it doesn't matter. You know, we both know the material so well that they don't see her as just the aide in the room. They see her as another teacher. One of Gloria's proudest achievements is a modern art painting that she helped special education students to create. Even though they were going to do something that was going to end up being one painting, 
they were going to be involved with only one little section of the painting and they would each be assigned a color. It was going to be an abstract painting like Jackson Pollock, except I thought ours would come out better because I really didn't like Jackson Pollock. He hung canvas up in garages and threw paint. The thing we did looks a lot better than his. Even though she recently turned 83, Gloria doesn't spend much time thinking about her age. I just didn't enjoy what I do. And when I see smiles and appreciation for what we do for the students, and when I see kids walking in front of me down the hall and going, oh, that's my, that's my piece that's up on the wall. Oh, that's my piece of work that was chosen that was put up. That's the best thing, I think.